In this video, we're going to quickly overclock and benchmark an NVIDIA GeForce GT610 graphics card. The GT610 is a low-powered, entry-level card first introduced in early 2012. If you're already familiar with other cards such as the GT710 or the GT520, you'll be right at home here since the GT610 is extremely similar to both of those. Since this card is so old, and because it was only an entry-level card even in its prime, getting some decent benchmarks may be a bit of a challenge here. So, what are we looking at here? The GeForce GT610 is based on the GF119 graphics processor, has 48 CUDA cores, and supports DirectX 12, feature set 11.0. The card runs at 810 MHz core clock and between 500 and 898 MHz memory clock. The card comes in both low profile and full height versions, featuring passive, single fan, and dual fan cooling solutions. The GT610 comes with either 1GB or 2GB of DDR3 or GDDR3 memory. The example card we have here is the Zotac GT610 Synergy Edition 1GB. So let's get ready to overclock and benchmark this little card and see what kind of performance we can pull out of it. The first thing we're going to want to do is update the drivers. Let's jump over to NVIDIA real quick and grab the latest ones. Now that our drivers are nice and updated, the next step is to install an overclocking program called MSI Afterburner. MSI Afterburner is a totally free tool that gives you a high level of control and monitoring over your graphics card. It's made by the company MSI, but in no way do you need to use it with an MSI brand of card or anything like that. Now that MSI Afterburner is installed, let's run through the key settings we'll be using. For this card, we'll be focusing on the core clock and memory clock values from the middle section here. We can see that the fan speed is currently set to auto. You can turn this off and manually select the fan speed, but for this video, we're just going to leave it on auto. Now, you can always reset your settings back to default by clicking the reverse arrow at the bottom. Once you're satisfied with your changes, you can click the check button to apply them. You can save your current settings to a profile by clicking the save button, then clicking on one of the profiles along the right hand side. Finally, you can have the current settings automatically apply at Windows startup by clicking the Windows icon in the upper right corner. Now I'm going to put a list of known successful GT610 overclocks on the screen, as well as in the description. Every card is different, but this should give you a good starting point for potential overclock values that may work for you. Now that we've locked in some potential overclock settings, we're going to want to test them. We're going to run through five programs with benchmarks to test our overclock for stability and performance. What I'll do first is run through all five benchmarks using stock settings to obtain base level performance numbers. I'll then select a minor initial increase in both core clock and memory clock settings. I'll then run through the Unigen benchmark tool over and over while increasing the overclock values slightly each time. Once the settings have been pushed too far and I start seeing crashing, graphical glitches, or any type of odd behavior, I'll turn back the settings to what they were just previously when everything was still running smoothly. At that point, I now have a solid idea of where the sweet spot is for overclocking my particular card. I can either stick with those settings or try tweaking things just a little further. After a couple hours of testing, this particular card was able to reach a solid overclock of 970 megahertz core clock and 695 megahertz memory clock. This certainly seems like a decent boost, so let's run through each of the benchmarks and see how the GT610 performed. First up, we've got Unigen Superposition Benchmark Tool. Running at the 720p low preset, base clock results achieved a score of 708. After overclocking, the score improved to 928. This represents an increase of 31.1%, so things are looking very promising so far. Next up, we've got CSGO Benchmark Map. Running at 720p with all the settings turned down to the lowest values, the initial test achieved an overall average FPS of 37.8. After overclocking, average FPS increased to 47.6. That's an increase of 25.9%. Another impressive boost of performance to be had here as well. S number 3 is Grand Theft Auto 5 Benchmark. Running at 720p, 50% resolution scaling, and everything turned down as low as it would go, our initial average FPS was 43.0. After overclocked, average FPS increased to 53.4. That's an increase of 24.2%. A significant boost to performance for sure. Fourth on the list is Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker Benchmark Tool. Running at the 720p standard preset, initial results achieved a score of 1891 
reported low rating. After Overclock, the score improved to 2459, which is a ranking of slightly low. This represents an increase of 30.0%, an extremely impressive increase to performance for this title. Benchmark number 5 is Borderlands 3 Benchmark. Running at 720p, 50% resolution scaling, and everything turned down to the lowest settings, the initial average FPS was 11.4. After overclocking, overall average FPS increased to 14.3. That's an increase of 25.4%. Certainly an impressive increase, but still not really enough for a playable experience. So it looks like for this title, the GT610 has met its match. Overall, I'd still have to say I'm a bit surprised at how well this little card with only 48 CUDA cores was able to perform. Feel free to leave a comment and thanks so much for watching.